All right, hello guys. We are 20 days into meteorological winter. That starts on December 1st. We're going to be taking a look at overall how things have gone, how we expect them to go, as well as taking a really in-depth look at the month of January and what we are expecting for that month so far. But before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content. And also make sure to share this with your friends and family on social medias if you think they will find it useful or interesting. Let's get right into things. This was our winter of 2019 to 2020 temperature forecast here. So I'm showing this because in a second I'm going to show you how it's gone over the past 20 days so far. It's even we were expecting warmer than normal conditions for the western United States as well as Florida and a little bit of Georgia. Overall colder, especially for the Midwest, but really for the entire north central and then northeastern United States. As you get further south though, it becomes a little bit less cold. Now let's take a look at what actually happened so far this winter uh, through 20 days. And you can see we do have really cold temperatures up there for the Midwest as well as for the New England states in the Northeast. Really, it's just missing for a little bit of those central United States like Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, Illinois. It just needs to get a little bit colder so far, but so far we're right on pace, I think, to have a pretty good outlook so far. Uh, we need things to cool down just a little bit in the southeast for things to verify completely, but this actually is a really good foundation to work with, and so far I'm very, very happy with how the forecast has gone. Uh, also, this is what we were forecasting for December, by the way, just in case you were wondering, which I also think has done extremely well so far. Now we're about to take a look at what NOAA is forecasting for the next 6 to 10 days, 10 to 14 days the next month, so the January forecast basically, and then the next 3 month forecast as well. Now, first things first, we're going to take a look at our 6 to 10 day temperature probability outlook from NOAA. And this is going to be from the 25th, which is Christmas, if you didn't know. Obviously, you probably do know. Uh, and then through the 29th. So from the 25th through the 29th, clearly we have a lot of warm temperatures going on from the Great Lakes down into the deep south Areas down there as well experiencing well above average temperatures for this time period. And then we have below average temperatures for the West Coast. This is a big, big switch up from what we've been experiencing and really, really interesting to see this happen. I know a lot of you in the East are not excited for this, but this is just what looks to happen for sure. Now in the 8 to 14 day outlook, this is the look. You can see we really have a very similar look, cold in the west, and then warm out in the east. And this one's going to be from the 27th through the 2nd of January. So it looks like we're going to end December on a warm note for the east and also begin January on a similar note. Uh, basically the same story, warm in the east, cold in the west, which is a big switch up from what we've been having ever since like mid-November. Now, we're about to take a look at your January temperature forecast from NOAA and then also your three-month forecast from NOAA, which is going to be January, February, and March, which is going to be super exciting to take a look at here. So first things first, here is the January forecast. You can see they're expecting warmer than normal conditions there for the Pacific Northwest as well as for a little bit of southern Texas and then down through southern Florida as well. That's only a slight chance. That's 33 to 50% chance of being above normal. So not really too huge of a chance, but they nevertheless are expecting warmer than normal conditions for these regions. Now, the cold looks to be centered over the Midwest through all the way into basically the eastern two-thirds of Montana, and then in through New England and some of the northeastern United States as well. Looks like a cold east uh, January so far from NOAA. They seem to be on board. We just need to take a look at some of the teleconnections and also what that polar vortex is going to do, which is going to be basically the determining factors and if we see this thing turn around and if we start to see a really cold January. But as of right now, they are really, really thinking that we will be seeing a cold January clearly depicted in this picture. Now, also, let's take a look at January to March of 2020. I can't believe it's almost going to be 2020, guys. It's so crazy. And you can see they're actually expecting pretty similar things. Warm in the south and west, and then cold for the Midwest at least, and then all the white areas are equal chances, but you can clearly tell they're expecting the trough to be most of the time set up over the eastern and central United States, uh, clearly depicted there by the colder than normal conditions in the Midwest, and then equal chances in surrounding regions. NOAA's not really known for really pulling the trigger on some sort of really bold forecast, so they're going very, very conservative with this one, but you can clearly tell they think the biggest chance is cold in the east, warm in the west and south. 
Now, we're about to look at some of that precipitation forecast from NOAA as well, which is going to be super exciting. Are we going to get snow with this potential cold over January and the January through March? Well, we're going to need precipitation, so we're about to take a look at that precipitation anomaly forecast from NOAA as well. Now, here's the January precipitation forecast, and this is a very promising look for maybe southern sliders that affect areas like Tennessee, Arkansas, Oklahoma, Texas, and then those deep south states as well, and then up through the mid-Atlantic, North Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia, Maryland, D.C., Delaware. So we could potentially be looking at some snow for some of these southern regions coupled with that cold air that's going to be coming down at times. It's going to be very interesting to see if we can get these two to work together and create some very interesting snowstorms. But so far, it looks like the ingredients are definitely there for nor'easters and as well as southern sliders. Also, let's take a look at that January through March precipitation probability outlook as well. And you can see they're expecting more wet conditions for the north and northeast, so basically north central and northeastern United States, and then more dry for the very southern states. So they're expecting a lot of clippers over the next few months. That's what I'm getting from this. Uh, definitely seeing some storms track in from Montana and then track eastward through the Great Lakes and out through the northeastern United States. This is a classic classic look. Also, wouldn't be surprised to see some southern sliders and a few nor'easters throughout the, the time frame, obviously, as well. But definitely, they're thinking the most common storm track is going to be some Alberta clippers. Uh, so that's going to be very exciting to see. But with those drier than normal conditions in the south, that kind of leads me to believe that Noah doesn't really think we will have too many nor'easters developing down there in the Gulf and then heading up the east coast. Obviously, they're not nor'easters yet, but that's usually where they end up coming from. Uh, so we're going to have to wait and see if we continue to see those develop down there or if really it starts to slow down and we see more storms coming from Canada or the northern Rockies and then heading over to the east. Now, we're about to get into our teleconnections, take a look at that, and then also take a look at our polar vortex forecast, see what the air is like over the Arctic regions, which is how we can tell what the polar vortex is going to do. Rest assured, though, I will teach you what everything means that I'm about to show you guys. So first things first, we're going to take a look at our AO, or Arctic Oscillation, and really we want this to be in a negative phase for cold in the eastern United States. When it's positive, though, we do see either warmer conditions or kind of not quite as cold conditions. If it's if the other oscillations look really good and this one's positive, we can really get away with it. But typically, you want this one to be in a negative phase. As you can see, it's going to be positive until about Christmas Eve, I would say. And then it pops negative for a little bit on this model and then maybe around the 29th, it's going to go neutral or positive once again. So this one's all over the place. But let's move on to our North Atlantic Oscillation, or NAO, and this one usually correlates with the AO a lot, but sometimes it doesn't. This time around, it does look very similar. We see it negative right now. By the way, you want this one to be negative just like the AO. I forgot to mention that, but around the 20th, which is today, uh, it's pretty negative. It's going to pop positive around the 22nd through the 23rd, and then go negative once again around Christmas, and then it'll trend towards positive on the 29th and 30th. And you guys might be wondering, why does it look to be warmer on Christmas then? Well, this usually lags behind a little bit. You'll see it go negative, and then it takes a little bit for that cold to react. So that's why a lot of models are expecting us to have colder than normal conditions right before January. I've taken a look at that, but really I'm not seeing anything too good looking on any of this so far. Uh, here's our Pacific North American Oscillation. This one's the opposite. You want it to be above that black line for cold conditions in the east. And if it's below that, typically the cold would be out west. So you can see this is going to stay negative until about the 23rd, and then it's going to stay neutral from that point until about the beginning of January. Uh, so we're not really seeing anything too good or bad on this. So far from looking at the teleconnections, I'm not really feeling like there's any determining factors here. I think we're just going to be dealing with pretty mild conditions. Through the first week of January, that seems to be the look right now. But here's our polar vortex. We can tell uh, this is the 10 millibar temperatures. And this is a really good indication of where the polar vortex is, what it's going to be doing. We can see this is the look right now. And a little bit of cold is making it into Canada and the United States. But as we head towards the 29th, you can see things start to really retreat and head back towards Russia and maybe northern Europe as well. Uh, and we really just deal with warmer than normal conditions for the United States. But as we take a look back towards January 5th, we see things start to re-enter 
into the eastern United States. So this is really going to be a good sign that after the first week of January, we might be dealing with some pretty cold temperatures. This one lags behind a lot, so I would typically give it about a week before we start feeling the effects of what this is doing. So I would say probably by the 10th of January, we might be having cold enter the eastern United States, but it's really, really difficult to say. Uh, all I know is that we are looking at the the right ingredients to have cold in January, but the timing is really what we can't pinpoint and what's going to be really fun to track with you guys. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Again, share this with your friends and family if you think they will find it interesting, and I'll see you guys in the next video.